Welcome everyone to today's video. We have the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. And my name is Sofia Reboulay. And honestly, today I don't know exactly what we're going to talk about. Elvira mentioned something about self-taught people. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to basically be a little bit, a little bit of a participant <laughs> in this video and hear what Elvira wanted to say because she wanted to talk about that. She saw something. Tell her. Yes. Yeah, so on social media, I, I see and actually I get a lot of students that are self-taught. And of course, it's very respectful. It's very impressive. But I do see the same bad habits with every single self-taught pianist I've ever encountered, be it on social media or be it students that come to me and that want help improving, you know, certain kind of blockages that they encounter when they're self-taught. So I thought to make a video about at least two of the most common bad habits that I've seen with all self-taught pianists. And self-taught pianist would mean somebody who, who does, doesn't have a teacher. Doesn't have a teacher yeah. at all. At all. At like all. they start from scratch. Yeah. Everything learning themselves. Yes. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, if we can highlight these bad habits that I just see occurring, um, you know, you can, uh, if you're self-taught, you can avoid these things and hopefully improve them and not encounter a later blockage to your technique when you want to become more advanced. To be honest, I don't personally remember to have had experience teaching people who come to me and they want piano lessons and that they, they've never had a teacher and that they learned themselves. But you had experience. I've like had that, that yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I have no idea how that, that, that would feel like. Somebody, I mean, I've seen online people who are self taught, and I, um, from what I've seen, it usually wasn't really good what, what they were doing technically and the approach to the keyboard and so from what I've seen, but I've seen it only online, so I yeah. can't say yeah. it from experience. But you can say about your. Well, I think the interesting thing to me is that you would you would think that if somebody's self-taught that there's a variety of mistakes you can make, and of course that's true. But for me, what's interesting is that I just see these two occurring always. So okay. if so you can already avoid these two, then I would say that you're already really, really well along the way of becoming really good if you are self-taught. So two things. Two things, yeah. Okay, so what are they? Okay, so the first thing that I would touch on is a technique of, you said, mentioning approaching the keyboard, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I've seen. On and that. I see a very pressing approach to the keyboard, which means that you would press and keep on pressing. So that's what I always see with self-taught pianists, that they never relax. So generally what, what would be a good technique, what, what I would consider a good you know, technique. What do you mean by press and keep on pressing? Yeah, so generally what I would consider is a good technique is I would press the key, yeah. and once it's pressed, I don't keep on pressing. I relax. I relax my arm, because gravity enough is enough to keep the key pressed. Okay. Uh, but what I see with self-taught pianists is that they keep on pressing. And I see this with self-taught pianists because I see it with students generally. I need to correct them. And once you correct them often enough, this happens. So they're applying pressure, actually, yeah. after they press the key? Yeah. There's still pressure yeah. applied. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which creates generally, if you keep on pressing, obviously where you should be relaxing, you're creating tension in your hands. And that, um, of course, can create sloppiness. It can slow you down and it can also create an ugly, ugly sound. Okay. So that's connected also with... Is that connected also with harsh approach to the keyboard? Yes. Or you mean more the... The keep on pressing, like keep are they on connected? pressing. I think they're connected because because what you... I've seen, mm -hmm. what I've seen online is actually a very harsh. I don't know about the keep on pressing because, like I said, I I haven't had experience with self-taught people. But what I've seen from videos is that they have a very harsh approach, like mm -hmm. to to the keyboard, very stiff. Mm -hmm. So I guess maybe they're connected. I think they are connected because if you would um, actually look at one of those videos again, or if you would see one of the students that uh, was self-taught. Uh, or one of the students that is self-taught, I think you would see that the pressure that they yeah. approach the keyboard with, whether that's more tense or less tense, it doesn't disappear. Okay. So I think that that's... But that's difficult for me to see online. Yeah, I would say so. I yeah. think that's Unless more... you've seen it in real life. Then... Exactly, I think that's more of an mm -hmm. experience. But pressing and keep on pressing, I can, I can understand that. 
it's also a very it's also a very bad technique but um yeah what i've seen is the harsh but but maybe they're connected because if you don't have the harsh approach to the keyboard and if you have a teacher who explains that to you you would also be able to once you press the key mm -hmm. that you'd be able to release it yes because of course logically they want to keep on pressing the key because it has to stay pressed well it's a complex like it's a complex uh, technique uh if you would think about piano playing, you think, okay, I press a key, it's as easy as it gets, you know? Yes. Uh, that's the most simple instrument to play, you press it, it's done. But it's actually more complicated than that, it's, it's more complex. It seems simple, but it's not. You have to press with the right amount of tension, and, and then you, you have to some. release the tension yeah. immediately. And, of course, that's quite easy when I show it on one note, but if I show it on more notes, on fast notes, you need to have internalized this technique so much yeah. that you don't do it like that which brings me actually to the second bad habit because they are connected is overlapping legato so yeah. if you the don't funny, the funny thing is that that happens that actually can happen even when you have a teacher you have to 100%. watch out let alone obviously when you are self-taught 100 percent. because i've i've had a lot of people come to me who 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 have had lessons in the past and they still overlap Overlapping is when you press more than one key at the same time, so you don't have this clear articulation, but you have you can hear more than one key. So I can imagine that that, that definitely can happen with self-taught people. Yes, and if we look at the technique that I just described, that you have to approach the keyboard with the right amount of pressure and immediately release once the key is already uh, pressed and let gravity do mm -hmm. its work, if you don't do that fast enough, you, you can't react fast enough, you can't lift your fingers also fast enough. No. And then you that results in overlapping. And I catch my students sometimes doing it because that's not a matter of only proper technique, but that's a matter of fast reactions and good ears. Um, so that is very difficult, I think, as a student to correct yourself because it's you have to have good ears and ears needs to be developed. It's contrary to what you would think, you're not necessarily born with a great ear or not. Some people, yes, better than others. But it's something you develop. It's something I'm still developing uh, to get to hear more and more detailed things. Uh, so you need a great ear and you need very fast reactions. You need a proper technique and being able to to execute that technique very, very quickly. Because what, what you said is actually interesting, that if you keep on pressing, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to release the key if you no, go to the next. exactly. And if you have pressure here and then pressure here, this finger is already, because it's the first finger is relaxed and you go to the second, you're already releasing that first. Yes. But if you have pressure on the first, yes. pressure on the second, yeah. there, is no, there is no feeling of, okay, now the hand needs to release the first finger, let it go. You go to the second finger and that's taught in the beginning very slowly and very deliberately. Uh, what articulation means. Yes, and I think also by not doing certain songs too soon and generally the the way of building because I did consider like why don't any of my students play with this pressing kind of technique? I don't every lesson tell them don't press or something, but yeah. it's just in, in the general I think build up of, of technique that you would do if you would do together uh, and with a teacher or if you would do by yourself. So uh, I think the another interesting question is, does that mean you shouldn't be self-taught? Like, does that mean you have to have a teacher? I have, I never say this or that. Like I can't mm. say do that or don't do that. I think there are exceptions. Mm. I would imagine that there are people who have, a, who, who, who are exception to the rule, but then you have to have a gift. I think that it has to come naturally because I've seen people who come to me, beginners, children, they get it right away from the beginning or adults, they get it right away from the beginning. So I can imagine that those type of people, they would have um, instinct, an intuition mm -hmm. of how to approach the keyboard, but that, that doesn't happen very often mm -hmm. in my opinion. So I can imagine that personally, I think you can teach yourself a lot of things alone you can, I mean, the, the keys of the piano, anybody can learn that without a teacher. You just find where the C is and you learn the notes and it's not that difficult. But the right approach, the right technique, um, 
those things I would personally get a teacher mm. to, to t- teach me that. And after that, you can drop the teacher if you really are confident and you think you can do it yourself. So whether you want to be self-taught or not, whether you're self-taught right now, whether you're considering it, um, if that's something for you or not, whatever you do, look out for these two things that can really stop your technique and that if you do actually, um, if you do them right, they can really help you express yourself better and, and play more more pieces of music that you would like more easily, more beautifully. Absolutely. So um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And um, thanks for watching.